or welcome back to my channel. Um, it's your girl C Money. They call me C Money because all I do is C Money, okay? So um, I just really wanted to get on here and talk about what's going on, the newest craze on Christian TikTok, the newest craze on the internet, being a Proverbs 31 woman. Now, <laughs> I know being a Proverbs like, we want to all find our Boaz. We want to all find our Ephesians 5 man. But listen, sis, calm down. Calm down, okay? <laughs> it's it's one step at a time. It's not a rat race. You, you already know that the internet makes people feel like, I got to get this done now. I got to find my man now. I got to get married now. I got to this and that now. Slow down. And we're just going to talk about why, okay? I was watching a Christian podcast called Doing Life with Ken and Tabitha um, as I was in the gym the other day. And they had, like, done a video about a Proverbs 31 woman. And I'm like, why do I keep hearing about this Proverbs 31 woman? Like, what is a Proverbs 31 woman like I just was not I heard about it in social media you know very big on Christian TikTok right now everybody's trying to find their Boaz everyone's trying to find their you know their their kingdom spouse right and it just made me really think you know as I was watching the podcast and stuff um it just made me reevaluate just how I navigate through life and how I carry myself as a woman like what makes a Proverbs 31 woman? And am I on the path of that? Because what I learned is that being a Proverbs 31 woman is not about the destination. You know what I mean? Like, it's about the journey. Like, you want to strive to be a Proverbs 31 woman, but it's like, it's always changing. You know what I mean? Like, it's how you carry yourself through life. What you do with your life. That is a Proverbs 31 woman. Because at the end of the day, you could claim to be that kind of woman today, that kind of person today. But tomorrow, a whole new slew of challenges and tribulations arise. So you really have to take an account with how are you going to be carrying yourself from day to day. It's not just, oh, today I'm this person or I'm going to be that person in a month. I'm going to be that person in a year or I need to be this person to get my kind of man because at the end of the day, or I need to be that kind of person to get my Boaz because at the end of the day, sis, you could have control over your tongue today, but tomorrow something could, something could, um, tempt you or something could make you feel some kind of way and now you're having to repent and you know apologize to God for stepping out of character and that doesn't mean that you're not a Proverbs 31 woman it means you're human okay I'm not gonna break down all of that I feel like you should really go in and study it yourself but I'm just gonna give you like my take and how I interpreted it um based on what I read and um what I watched with um, Ken and Tabitha. In the first couple lines of this, it says, her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. Now, if you're not married, obviously, or you don't have a boyfriend, whatever, obviously, it's like, <laughs> it's like, sis, does that really apply to me? Yes, it does, because you should really think about how you carry yourself, okay? I know we've all been hurt by men and I know that we've all been like traumatized or like we have this idea from social media like, oh, ain't, but you know what, sis, they are. And we need to like really look within ourselves and see, could we possibly be the problem? Like. Where well, it says her husband has full confidence in her. He knows that she is going to always come through for him. Do you have that ability to be able to provide for somebody, to be able to provide their needs, to be able to listen, to be able to really understand 
that person? Do you have the knowledge, the wisdom, the, the words to say, to speak life into that person? Um, he lacks nothing of value, which means like this materialistic stuff, it's like God doesn't care about this materialistic stuff. We can't take it with us when we go on into heaven. But it's our heart posture. Like, do we provide do we speak life over him? Do we pray for him? Do we pray for our future spouse? Like, what are we doing? You know what I mean? So I feel like that's something that we really need to work on as a single person if you're trying to become a Proverbs 31 woman. If you're trying to um, embody this person we need to look within ourselves like me I do have an issue with always knowing what to say to a man because I just felt like all my life I've been abandoned by men or men have always just kind of used me and things of that nature but as God is working on me and is changing my heart I now know like just because somebody hurt me in the past doesn't mean I have to take that into my next relationship so no I'm not going to be hard and no I'm not going to tell him oh you figure it out you do this or I'm not going to be nagging or down his throat or nothing like that like no for my next relationship I'm going to come in with an open heart and an open mind and just a graceful spirit and just allowing him to be soft you know a lot of these men out here they they battle a lot they go through a lot out in the world and he just wants to come home to somebody who's soft and somebody who's going to speak life over him ask him how his day was and just hold him if he doesn't want to talk just hold him hug him just give him that love that he's yearning for from his wife you know what i mean so that is something that we need to look into how are we treating these men out here and i know on social media it's oh sis do him run his pockets treat him how he treats you like i don't know where this whole mentality came from of of do him like like do him how he's doing you like what no nobody wins at that at the end of the day so you need to just stick with how you know with what god is telling you and if god is telling you to leave that person because they're only like making you feel like you have to treat them that certain way leave sis because there is a man out there that you're gonna want to treat with softness and kindness and just femininity okay cool so that's that was in the first couple lines um she works with her eager hands okay what are you doing are you using your hands to scroll all day, to be on TikTok all day, to count during money? Like, what are we doing with our hands? We need to find other outlets, other things that keep our minds off of certain distractions, okay? So for me, creating art, doing tattoos, um, going, going to the gym, um, I like to just do things that it's just, I know it's beneficial, okay? I know that it's pleasing to God. It's, it's crafting with my hands. It's doing things with my hands that are pleasing to God. I'm not scamming and, you know, counting dirty money and all this and that because cool since you got money, but how you got that money is displeasing and dishonorable and you know it. And it doesn't make you feel good and it only makes you feel good for the time being but we need we need something that makes us feel good for eternity okay so craft things that you can sell that you can do as a hobby whatever that is pleasing to God if you like to knit crochet paint body painting uh, doing makeup um, content creating anything that you just love to do and brings you joy do that okay and god will applaud you and and you will be just fulfilled in ways that you don't even recognize all right y'all i'm just gonna read off my notes because to be honest reading directly from the scripture and stuff it's getting a little bit it's getting a little bit much 
I highly suggest that you go into your word, read Proverbs 31, 10 to, I believe, 30, don't quote me, it's about 20 verses. Just go in there, study it, meditate on it, and just, you know. But I'm just going to read from my notes, okay? So, um, do you take care of yourself and your family? Do you cook for your family? Do you keep the space clean? Do you understand the promises that you made with God when you decided you wanted to be a woman of God? Okay? Do you dress modestly? And modesty looks different to everybody, okay? For me, I don't mind a little shoulder showing, but I, I try to limit that. I try to limit the short skirts, the, the short dresses. I try to limit how much I have my hair out. Um, I am working on like converting into like covering my hair completely, having it in protective styles when I'm out in public because I just feel like, uh, not to get too sidetracked, but I just feel like a lot of my identity is held in my hair. Like, I feel like when people see me, they notice me because of my big hair, my afro, whatever, my curls, whatever. And I feel like they just kind of just, it just became my identity. And I just don't want that. I want people to see me and see God and see beauty and just see grace. So, are we just modestly? Um, are we cursing like a sailor? Are we watching our mouths? Like, what are we doing? What are we doing? You know, and I just feel like you, in order to be a Proverbs 31 woman, because it is such a continuous process, you need to look at where you are today and how you live for God today. And it'll take day by day, step by step, you will become that Proverbs 31 woman. Okay, so if you're struggling with cuss words and cursing, maybe that's how you, that's, that's step one. You're just more cognizant and more aware of how you speak. If you struggle with self-control, you pray and ask God, God, please help me with self-control. I'm very quick to react to things and I just, I don't think before I speak, God, I need help. I need your guidance. That is what you work on. You work on little things. Don't think, oh, I got to learn how to cook. I got to dress properly. I got to change my wardrobe. I got to wash my mouth. I got to do all this and that in one day in order to find your man. Because I can guarantee you that man is not on the same uh, race as you, okay? He's taking his time. He's building an empire. He's building his relationship with God. He's building and he knows it's step by step. So why is it kind of like a woman's thing to always be like this? Like we're on a timeline. Like I get it. Women biologically have a clock, but spiritually we do not have a clock. Okay. Spiritually, God knows that we are human. It is gonna it's a process it's gonna be day by day but at least we're if we're striving to be better and we're striving to strengthen our relationship with God day by day then eventually we're gonna get there eventually we're gonna find our Boaz eventually we're gonna find our Ephesians 5 man but stop ha putting this pressure on yourself that you need to instantly be a new person tomorrow because I can like I mean, some women might find their man tomorrow, but it's very unlikely, very unlikely. So just slow down, okay? Do you handle business? You're limiting your excuses and you're staying disciplined. Like, handling business can mean anything. You're going to work, you're going to school, you're getting good grades, you know, you're friendly with whoever enters your establishment, whatever. Are you handling business? Are you taking care of not only the needs of your family, but the needs of yourself? Are you keeping up with yourself? Are you showering daily? Are you, you know, just self-care, things that make you feel good? Like, you know what they say, like, sis, you're not ugly, you just need a shower. <laughs> like, 
go take a shower think about god pray reflect and just really work on yourself get your nails done if you enjoy keeping your nails done if you enjoy facials get those facials keep if you enjoy wearing makeup wear that makeup do what makes you feel good okay but the more you're like falling into temptation and falling into things that you don't want to do i.e if you're letting men kind of make you feel bad about not having sex with them or um you know maybe you don't want to dress a certain way but you're afraid that you're not going to fit in you're afraid that guys aren't going to look at you because you're not dressing the way that you used to dress like it's okay to have a funeral to your old self and that's something that I really had to come into terms with is as I'm trying to become this Proverbs 31 woman is that I had to have a funeral for my old self and I do I still grieve my old self yes yes there are times where I look back and I'm just like dang if only I still partied if only I still you know dress the way I dressed if only I still smoked I would still have these certain connections and these certain things but it's like those were not making me feel good like it was making me feel good to the world but then I would get home and just feel so bad and just feel unclean and just undeserving and like just a mess so I just really recommend that you just look within and look with how your heart posture is how you treat people do you give back do you volunteer do you um do things you know for your church like what are you doing with your hands what are you creating with your hands what are you creating with your legacy sis okay um are you worshiping god are you praying are you strengthening your prayer life because the one thing that i promised you that is because you know we're also learning trying to break these generational curses a praying mother that is the strongest thing that your child could ever have is a praying mother a praying to me strengthening your prayer life is something that your family needs okay and that's all a part of the work of your hands so definitely do that okay um do you effectively communicate because I know that there are women out there who's like, oh, I love to cuss. Like, that's just, it's in my vocabulary. That's just how I am and blah, 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 blah. And I'm not saying that um, you should care about what people think. But I'm telling you right now, God don't like it. It's not ladylike. It's not cute. <laughs> and it's not going to attract the kind of man that you want. Okay, you want a man who could effectively communicate without cursing at you or without uh, reacting in anger or rage. Because honestly, like attracts like. I know they say that opposites attract, but like attracts like. If you got a dirty mouth, if you're living worldly, you're going to attract a dirty mouth living worldly man. And you don't want that. Because then, because in your heart, you're feeling like, oh, I am a Christian woman. I don't understand why this man talks to me like this. I don't understand why his communication is like this. I don't understand why he gets so angry with me. Because, sis, it's a reflection of you. Like, I hate to be the one to say it. So we need to work on how we effectively communicate with not only our partner, but our mother, our father, our friends, our, our kids. Okay? Our kids. But also, um, when it comes to, like, how you speak to your parents, you know, honor fa your father and mother, uh, I have to work on that a lot. <laughs> a lot. I, I still have to work on my own heart posture. I feel like I get easily annoyed, easily agitated. I, ugh, just so much ugly stuff that's within me. But every day I'm asking God, soften my heart, God allow me to go into the situation with grace allow me to not be so quick to react because i know that things quickly trigger me but 
just remind me that this frustration is yours God like take it out of my hands okay so that's helped me be able to navigate and do things that I necessarily don't want to do okay if I just did the dishes in in the in the house and I go out for a little bit I come back home and everybody's just big chilling but there's more dishes in the sink you don't think that bothers me yeah that bothers me big time but you know I just pray to God like okay um my family they're fed my family they you know I understand that this is the role that I play in the house you know I have to help my mom who works long hours who is busy you know I I understand these things and that helps me move in a way that is pleasing to God like I don't do things out of Ugh. you know like I, I guess I gotta be the one to do it because nobody else is gonna do it like no like it's come to the point where I realized my position and my role, you know, and that's going to help when it comes to me um, moving into my own space and into my own house with my son and things like that. So just take an account and just really just take accountability and just understand like you don't have to act out of rage and anger all the time. That's not going to get you anywhere. Just do what you have to do. Handle your business. Just do what you got to do, okay? <laughs> I ain't mean to help you, sis, but yeah, do what you got to do. Like, I get it. It's annoying. It's frustrating. But, you know, take it as kind of like a lesson. Like, God is teaching me how to steward my own house. God, so just take that into account. Um, do you understand the promise you made with God when you got saved so pretty much I don't want to take it back to traditional household like the woman cooks the men does the does the outside work whatever but that is kind of how it is it's like when you made a promise with God you made a promise to take care of your household you made a promise to take care of the kids you made a promise to keep up with yourself and you know do certain things like so you know what they say like oh my husband you know he which I'm not saying that a husband shouldn't help with the kids but if you were married to somebody who was equally as yoked as you you honestly wouldn't have these problems because a man would take care of his children like the bible says but that's if what you, a mother and wife does like Ugh, I know it's annoying, but that's what we signed up for. We signed up to be that that safe space for our family, to be a nurturer, to be, you know, a caregiver, to you know the cook, you know. <laughs> and I and I get it. I get it. Cause being able to to cook for yourself, that's a that's a basic human thing. Like every human on earth should know how to at least cook an egg should at least be able to make some toast if you were equally yoked your man would not want to put all the stress on you would not want to put all the pressure on you he would know how to help take care of a household but for those women who feel like oh well i didn't sign up for this well sis you kind of did <laughs> understanding your role as a woman and as a graceful woman that's what you need to do you need to make sure that your kids are up ready and on time for school you need to make sure that they're fed you need to make sure that their space their area is clean you need to make sure that your husband feels loved and cared for and He's able to trust you with anything and everything like you want him you want to be that safe space for somebody you want to be that safe space for him because he's fighting so much spiritually outside of your four walls when he comes inside you don't want to greet him with oh why is you late like did you pick up dinner like da 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 like you was out blah 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 like you don't want don't be that girl sis and I can tell you from facts, I used to be that girl. I used to be like, why is you not hitting me up? Why Why is you acting mad distant? Like, you don't want to hear that. <laughs> I 
So if you're looking for your Ephesians 5 man, if you're looking for your Boaz sis, you need to cut that out. You need to really like, if he's coming home late from work or whatever, hear him out. Hey babe, how was your day? Like, you know, you're home a little bit later than usual. Is everything okay? Was everything good on your ride home? Like, Be his friend. Don't just be that person sis. I am gonna hold you. <laughs> I am gonna hold you. Respect them, respect your partner, respect their space. If they don't wanna talk right then and there, just give them a hug, just show them love. Pray over them, speak life over them. Don't, why aren't you talking to me? Did I do something wrong? Did, um, am I not doing enough? Like da 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 da, like, Men don't want to hear that. Like, I ain't gonna lie. Like, I wouldn't even want to hear that. Like, there are times where I just don't want to talk or things have happened outside that it's gonna take me a minute to process. But when I'm done processing it, I'm gonna come to you and I'm gonna talk to you. And that's what you really need to be for your person. Just be that, that place, you know? Do you truly love yourself realizing your internal beauty? Okay, like, I come on YouTube, no makeup, for the most part. I'm sure there's gonna be videos where I, you know, feel like I wanna wear makeup, but I don't really wear a lot of makeup anymore. And that took a lot, okay? I used to be that girl where it's just like, even if I have to do a little eyeliner, like I'm doing it every day. And it got to the point where it's like, I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm exhausted from waking, from having to wake up early to do my makeup, but to impress who? Like, be for real, to impress these worldly men, like, be for real. Because a man who truly wants to be with you, who truly loves you, is gonna see you, is gonna see how your heart is, okay? They're gonna see how, when you're outside in the real world, how you're treating other people. They're gonna see how you smile at others, how you react to certain things. Do you watch your mouth? Um, I definitely try to watch how I speak over myself. They pay attention to that too, how you speak over yourself. Like a man isn't gonna want a woman who's, when they ask you, oh, where do you see yourself in 10 years? Oh, I don't know. Um, I'm just kind of going with the flow. Oh, I was gonna do this, but this happened, so now I don't really want to do that anymore. Or I was gonna do this, but I did that, but like nobody wants to hear that. If you're confident in yourself and confident in your speech and how you carry yourself as a woman when trials and tribulations run your way, those are the kind of men that you want. You don't want the men that, you know, oh, you can't take her swim, or you got to take her swimming on the first date because she wears a lot of makeup and da 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 Like, what? <laughs> Let a man see you in your natural face and when you're all dressed up and dolled up. And he still loves you and looks at you the same way because he knows how you are on the inside. Like, you're not just outer beauty, sis. You are worth more than rubies. So take care of yourself. Do you go to the gym? Do you eat right? Do you exude gracefulness? How do you speak to somebody when they're talking to you bad or they're treating you bad? Like, you know, or I just on social media seeing people like, oh, if somebody got my man's order wrong, I'm 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 going to battle, I'm going to war, blah 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 blah. Calm down, sis. Why can't you just call the server over? Hey love, hi. Um, so, so sorry, but you know, my man, he didn't want onions on his burger and there's onions on his burger. Do you think you could, we could like, you think you could handle that for me sis? Like be playful with it, like be playful. Like I'm a very playful woman. I'm not serious at all. And I think that that plays into my Proverbs 31 woman aesthetic okay i think that really plays into it like i'm not serious all the time i mean i'm serious when it comes down to my business my family my finances all of that but 
when it comes to like something like addressing a problem like I could be at school and be like girl like what's good with you sis like what is with the attitude today like and now we're both laughing and giggling and things move on like we move on from it like it's really not that serious like stop letting social media make you feel like you have to be such a hard person you don't have to be a hard person like and I hate to be the one to break it to you like it's just not cute, okay? And I know that we're, it's not like, oh, we're not, what are we doing for the male gaze? This is about being a Proverbs 31 woman and trying to get our Boaz and our Ephesians 5 man. So I'm just giving you some tips and tricks, okay? Be playful. Just Be exude the fruits of the spirit. And if I gotta remind you, the fruits of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, okay? The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness. <laughs> I went on like fourth grade. I don't know. But yeah, so just always remember to do that, you know, stop being so serious. Stop taking life so serious. Live gracefully. Live the way that is pleasing to God. And I promise you, sis. You are on your way to be a Proverbs 31 woman. Don't feel like, oh, I don't know how to cook. I don't know how to clean, which says learn how to clean. But, you know, it's just like, oh, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do that. I don't know. Stop making excuses. Excuses does not make a Proverbs 31 woman. We handle our business okay if you feel like you need to go to school go to school if you feel like you need to go get a nine to five go get a nine to five if you feel like you need to um strengthen your prayer life and get in your word get in your word i mean always get in your word but really get in your word if you want to wake up at because um it mentions in proverbs 31 that uh she wakes up early. She wakes up before the sun. Do that. Prepare for that the night before. Stop making excuses like, oh, I, I just always go to bed late. I'm a night or yeah, I'm a night owl and it just doesn't work out for me. Sis, make it work. Okay? Make it work. Do your prayers. Do your Bible studies in the morning, and the afternoon, before you go to bed. Meditate on your prayers before you go to sleep. And I promise you, sis, you'll be up before the sun. God will wake you up. If you are waking up, like, in the middle of the night at 3, 4, 5 in the morning, that is God trying to tell you, sis, I want to talk to you. I need to talk to you. I, I, I want to hear from you. So, wake up! It's a first of the month. <laughs> now, but seriously, like, wake up. I know your flesh, I know your body is telling you, like, oh, I'm tired five more minutes. But then five more minutes turns into an hour, and now you're running late for your day. And trust me, I've been there. I be there even still to this day. But when God wakes me up, I get up. The best way that I can, I get up. And I get into my word, I listen to a sermon, I, I listen to my worship music, and I'm ready to start my day. I don't have to go back to sleep. I'm ready to start my day. And just remember that your life is not perfect. It's never going to be perfect. But it is better when you have God. It is more graceful when you have God. It is softer when you have God, okay? So just be mindful of all of these things. Don't let the world harden you because the more you let it harden you, the farther Proverbs 31 is going to seem, okay? The more you try, the more you actually put in effort and energy into being a better woman, into being a better person, you're going to fall into being a Proverbs 31 woman without even realizing it. Like, as I was listening to the podcast, and they're talking about, you know, cooking and do you cook for your family? <laughs> wow, like, yeah, I do. Without even realizing that that's what a problem 31 woman does, is you provide for your family. I cook for my family, I want to say, 
like four times a week like I cook like my mom enjoys cooking as well so you know she cooks too but for the most part I'm cooking I clean every weekend I clean on Wednesdays because it's like I like to make sure that my prayer life is strong I like to um, go to the gym that's something that I find pleasure in it's going to the gym and keeping my body healthy I like to intermittent fast I like to fast I like to feel lighter on my feet okay like that's just something natural and I feel like once you do things in the natural like or once you do things in the spiritual it'll manifest in the natural okay so if you ask god for help in certain areas of your life it'll come to fruition it'll manifest if you ask him to help you wake up at five in the morning he will help, he will he will make sure you wake up at five in the morning okay <laughs> if you ask him lord can you help me dress more modestly Show me what's pleasing to you. When you put on a certain outfit, when you put on, when you put on that old outfit that you like to wear, when you you know before you go out and you're wearing that that dress that you love, you are gonna look at yourself and be like, ooh, maybe that's a little too short, or maybe it just doesn't fit me right anymore. And you'll pick something else. Like it'll just happen. Like I feel like we need to stop putting all of this pressure on ourselves to be a certain way. You know what I mean? Like, it'll come. Like, it's it's a journey. Because at the end of the day, I don't see a Proverbs 31 woman as just a middle-aged mother, wife. I see her as an older woman struggling with her body image, you know, with, um, with her body changing. Um, I see it as a younger girl coming into you know, dealing with trauma and, and not being able to navigate and understand. I, I see it as a teenage girl with who just went through a heartbreak and having to learn how to keep her heart soft so that way she doesn't bring it into her next relationship. I see this woman in all different ages. So it's like, we can't just, I'm gonna be this woman today. I'm gonna do this today. I mean, yes, that's a good start, but like we also got to realize that it is a journey and it's going to continue to be a journey because every day life throws new challenges at us. Just relax this, slow down, trust God's timing, trust yourself, trust who you are, trust who you want to be, be and show up as that person. If you want to be somebody who goes to the gym every day, go to the gym every day. Even if it's just to walk on the treadmill, go to the gym. If it's somebody who wants to take yourself out on a date once a week or once a month or whatever, be that person. Take yourself out. It might be scary. It might be like, oh, people are looking at me like I'm such a loser. Hello, mama, you are such a loser. But you're not. Like, you're really not, sis. If anything, I look at people... Like, when I'm out with people and I see people who are eating alone, I'm like, dang, I would rather be eating alone right now. <laughs> I love taking myself out. I'm actually about to take myself out after this video. Like, I just love spending time with myself, spending time with God, strengthening my creativity, drawing, going out to eat, like, taking myself out on dates, doing things that I love. That fulfills me. And then when a man sees that because your aura your light is gonna glow when you start really embodying this woman and taking care of you know internal problems external you know things that are unpleasing to god when you start handling those things these men are gonna start coming baby they're gonna start coming but you want to make sure that they are God-fearing and they are equally yoked as you. So go on dates, do things, you know what I mean? Explore people, explore, you know, ask God to reveal their true intentions to you. But definitely go out on dates. Don't be scared. Don't um, isolate yourself because God created us to be somebody's rib. We somebody's rib, sis. So you need to really explore and find who that man is. He's going to church 
um, my church actually hosts a like I don't want to call it a small group but like it's like a thing for 20 somethings and 30 somethings so that is on my new year's resolution list is to start attending these services and who knows who knows maybe my Boaz is in there somewhere praying for a girl a single mother who is very creative and just <laughs> so stop isolating yourself be graceful you know do things out of the norm go donate go um volunteer at a soup kitchen just really just shine your light okay and i feel like that's what a proverbs 31 woman is it's just a woman who is not afraid to shine her light is not afraid to share her testimony is not afraid to provide for her family is not afraid to do what she has to do okay like this video right now like it's not the easiest you know like okay is anybody gonna re be able to relate to the video but i know that there are millions of y'all who can relate who are just like me young single 26 year old mother living at home like just seeking for her for her boaz seeking for her man to help for somebody who could help and just elevate you know what i mean yeah y'all this is just a couple things that i had on my heart and you know something that i was really just hearing a lot on social media and i just feel like it got a little bit misconstrued and i'm just here to kind of put it in a more realistic perspective for y'all and just in a way where it's like okay sis like we're on the same walk you know what i mean we're on the same walk walk in our journey right now because i don't have it all the way together and i don't feel like i should be pressured to have it all together in order to find my man like it don't work like that as long as you are consistently working every day to be a better person to be a better woman to strengthen and sharpen your skills you gonna find your man, sis. And it might, it might happen tomorrow. It might happen in a week. It might happen in a year. But just continue to pray. Continue to pray for your future spouse. And sis, do not settle. Please. Please do not settle, okay? All right, y'all. I love you. God loves you. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Um, leave leave some comments down there on what you think a proverbs 31 woman is and i'll see you in the next one bye